gonna keep trying. Oh man, what is sleep? Yeah, so I've just been so curious about this variant. I want to see if I can implement it. Plus, I don't know, it seems to me that the blindfold mode is kind of silly anyway. Um, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, dark view is declared, but never used. I should. Welcome back. Uh, today I'm attempting to implement Fog of War chess, also known as Dark Chess. Um, this isn't my first time trying to do it. I did briefly start on it yesterday. Uh, didn't make very much progress with it, and so here we are. Um, uh, okay, so I had committed something the other day that is no good. Um, yeah, so I don't need to add additional view component trees, so I should not be importing a separate module. Um, rather I need to enhance the existing modules to manipulate the, the DOM that's passed to chess ground. Or rather manipulate the data model that's passed to chess ground that generates the VDOM that becomes the DOM and you know the rest. Um, this is a bit of a stretch, a bit of a learning curve for me, um, but you know I'll probably be the better for having learned it, so no holding back. Uh, so yeah, what we're looking at here is um, uh, just trying to compile the code that I've written thus far. I have encoded into um, the Lee Chess server the rules for Dark Chess, which is basically there's no check and you win by taking the king. Pretty simple rules. Um, one could argue that these rules are pretty similar to that of children's chess, where kids just, you know, any pseudo-legal move is considered legal, and even some moves that aren't necessarily legal are played anyway. Um, Alright, so we have an unhandled error event. Cannot find um, Leela UI Analyst Source. All right. Um, wait. Oh yeah, I'm already in Leela. So UI analyze source. Uh, referenced from where? Um, yeah, there is no dark folder anymore. I changed that. Um, so. Oh, events.js. Um, okay, so yeah, apparently my analysis reference to this file that I'm convinced no longer needs to exist also has to go. Um, and let's try to build this once more. This does do a parallel build, however, it doesn't. This isn't an incremental build, so this isn't um, using the results of the previous build in this build. So it starts the whole build process all over again. But uh, given that the build is faster than it used to be, it used to take many minutes. Now I think it takes like two or three minutes to execute a build. Um, I can show a little more patience here. And perhaps I should uh, open another login window, you know, just in case uh, this does successfully build. And uh, one thing I can do is once we built, I can actually run the application. Um, let's see, so yeah, see I'm trying to 
I'm currently attempting to connect to um, my server. However, the server itself is down because I have to compile it. Uh, the notion that... Okay, so what I'm intending to do today is uh, first deploy what I've got, make sure that dark chest shows up as a variant. Second, um, try to improve the blindfold mode such that it only creates pieces uh, for the player who's actually able to move. Um, well, no. I guess I'm mistaken. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'm not. Yeah, maybe that's not a great idea. I guess I'll know one way or the other. So I, my plan is to um, create pieces for all of the um, for the player who's on move. If you're in blindfold mode, you there's no value in seeing your opponent's pieces anyway, because um, as long as you're able to generate a legal list of destination squares, it doesn't matter whether or not you see your opponent's pieces. Actually, it occurs to me now more and more that this is a terrible idea because en passant and so forth. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. There's just so... I know they say that it's advertised in Chess Ground that this has no chess rules built into it. And then it has special code to handle cases like promotions and en passant. Um... I was looking at this, um, well, through GitHub I was looking at it. Uh, maybe I could access it through this way, too. Find, uh, print, grab chess ground. Yeah, so we've got, like, here. Um, oh, but this isn't the chess ground source code, this is the distributed version. Um, which we'll say looks a lot like the TypeScript that it's compiled from, um, but it's not the same thing. But yeah, this somewhere has rules for like on passant. Rep passant in uh, round node modules chess ground. Uh, grep I don't know, case insensitive, recursive. Oh, really? Is there nothing there for chess rules? This is strange. Ultimately, what I need to do is just create my own fork of chess ground and be, make that the basis for my development here. But I don't want to do that until there ends up being actual merit to the idea. Okay, so actually, yeah, the rules for en passant and such aren't built into chess ground. However, the library that manipulates chess ground um, has its own um, need to explicitly destroy the capturing pawn. But what I'm confused about is how is that any different than any other capture? I don't get it. Because a normal pawn capture would be you move the pawn to the square and uh, remove the pawn from the square that well, you know en passant. You're able to move capturing as if the pawn had moved only one square. Um, I'm just confused that en passant is a special function here. Uh, so how's my compilation doing? Oh, it's done. And it compiled successfully, so I could say... Let's just run this. In fact, I could say sbt run-v, which will execute the run task, which brings up the server. So the server should come up soon. Um, meanwhile, I can go 
looking around inside that library, UI round um, source. And I can look for uh, Ampasoft here and these source files. I guess these source files would need to be changed either way, but this source might expect there to be um, an opponent's pawn to be ampassanded. So. Oh. Oh, I see. This implements ampassant one way. But for atomic chess, we would need a different implementation. Um, this is amazing to me, though. Um, is this really the easiest way to implement that rule? But I guess dark chess and ampassant will never be the same thing. Well, no, but if I'm going to change blindfold mode, period, to tag or remove pieces that we don't need, um, then it needs to have a way of tolerating the absence of the pawn that we would otherwise expect to be there. Yeah, blindfold atomic is what's going to mess everything up. But I guess we could take this one step at a time. Um, right now, the logic for blindfold boards um, does not reside inside chess ground because there's no need to put it there. But um, while currently there's no need, dark chess would need the blindfold or would need some ability to make pieces not visible on a piece-by-piece -piece basis, as opposed to um, making all pieces on the board invisible, which can be worked around, by the way, but with a custom user style, as uh, I proved yesterday. Um, can I get... Huh. Interesting. May I observe the actual styles that are supposed to go with this page, or do those just not deploy? Um, it's a fun little way. Reconnecting, it says. It appears I have some issue with my deployment. Uh, okay, failed to load the CSS files. Um, is there some reason that my CSS files aren't there? Well, I guess I could troubleshoot that, right? Well, first of all, I can verify, is the file, in fact, on the server? Nope. Not there. Alright, second. Uh, what do I do second? Oh. Oh, shoot. Um... This, yeah, where is this trying to find this? Is this trying to look at, yeah, EN. That EN prefix is no longer there. Um, shoot, this might be a configuration issue that I might have to uh, fix without showing the full configuration to you guys. So let me go into the config file. Um, Rep that in Leela slash conf. Yeah, my asset domain is no longer going to be a domain that's non existent. It's going to be um, okay. And um, I suspect that, yeah, I need to restart the server now to get that to deploy. Um, there's no way... well, we'll try it. 
we'll give this a shot trying to launch the server or have it re load the configuration that I just changed um, it gets rid of the en prefix for the asset domain and once this is done deploying we'll see if it actually did reload the configuration or not Man, come on. Oh, this is better. Very good. Um, so put a username and password in here. And yeah, we get our good old dark theme back. Um, oh. This time without a language prefix in that URL also. Um, I wonder how I did my user style. Yeah, okay, my user style obviously doesn't have the language prefix in the domain. That's cool. All right, or I guess subdomain or whatever you want to call it. Um, so my goal would be that I'm going to enable blindfold chess and then go back, uh, play with the machine, uh, actually from any position. I don't actually have the AI cluster up either. Um, but my point in playing against the machine isn't to see the moves and not to see any kind of clever reply or something. It's more so um, that we're able to demonstrate what pieces are actually on the board in blindfold mode. Uh, so we go here and let's see. Got our board. It's manipulable. Okay, we have a piece. We have a ghost piece. Well, that's weird. I didn't expect a ghost. Uh, let me increase the size of my. There we go. Yeah, I've got my developer tools open. The key part is that I should be able to iterate through the pieces on the board. Not just this piece. Oh, hang on. Yeah, so I just changed this property, opacity 0, back to opacity 1. Um, and let's put that in the user style, just for convenience sake. Uh, so we'll set opacity colon one try to reload this page and yeah all the pieces are still visible so the point isn't to cheat in blindfold mode because that's easy that's not the objective the objective is to try to get those pieces in blindfold mode to not be there by changing the code to act, literally remove the opponent's pieces um, so how am I going to do that? Or at least tag them with some sort of style that says that they shouldn't be there. Um, so I saw that there's this will change. Okay, apparently that's not something I... I saw that in the user style. I thought that would be something I could exploit uh, to quickly make some way to hide the pieces, but apparently not. Um, grab ghost. Um, grab ghost in Leela UI round. Alright, so yeah, there's a compiled version. I want just TypeScript though, I guess. Um, or maybe JavaScript also, but just not the min.js. 
So chest ground is what I'm going to need to be editing. Uh, oh, check this out. So, elements. Every element has an attribute called ghost. So, yeah, what I could do... Um, I could augment my style here. Uh, let's see, can I get this up in tab number four? So, I just put in a rule that says for blindfold mode, make the pieces visible. But, um, you know, if a piece has this ghost attribute, uh, it doesn't need to be visible. Um, I'm not sure how to give a piece a ghost attribute, but it looks like that's an attribute that can be assigned to a piece. Um, I presumably as it's about to promote or what have you. Um, oh, but this reminds me that now I've actually got to um, got to fork this. Oh, let me log into this service. Sign in. Um, something like that. And then we want to fork... Um, oops, that's not it. So, we want to fork chess ground, which is a different repository by the same developer. Oh, have I forked this at some point? Maybe I have. Um, oh, it's still up to date. Amazing. Apparently this library is pretty stable. No, I forked it from different developers. Fork. Um, so how far back am I with respect to... Um, not that upstream, but the root upstream. I'm way out of sync, aren't I? No. Okay, got two additional changes. It's not mergeable, because there, apparently there's some kind of merge conflict, which doesn't make any sense. I want to see what changed, what's in conflict. Because, yeah, what I changed is less interesting. Um, wait. Okay, did I flick ground? That's not what I was looking for. I want to fork this and name it chess ground. Um, ay, ay, ay. So... This is a problem. Um... Because I'm sure that the upstream has changed, and I don't have a way to create another fork. Um, no, seriously, I do want two forks, though, or I want multiple branches. But I branched this from that guy's. I, so. I don't want to have to delete this either. Um, well, okay, so we're going to. I think I've already got a clone of this lying around. Uh, yeah, I've already got flick ground there, but that's not the library I want to edit. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna for now assume that ghost is an attribute I can't, or a tag I can put on a piece. Well, not that I should even need the piece to be there, because my ultimate goal is to remove the piece, if possible. Um, this is more than I can keep up with. Okay. That's updated. I've got so many pet projects I haven't been able to get to. And I do keep tabs on numerous things I guess I don't need to. Um... 
All right, so we're going to change directory to flip round and see what it takes to uh, get remote v. Okay. Um, that's great and all, but that's not the library that I need to be. Um, okay, so let's go to flick. Or I'm sorry, to chess ground and copy this URL and then get remote add upstream this is the upstream get branch um, I think I want to rename master ay 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 so yeah let's go back to our fork Can I go to branches here? Branches is somewhere here. Some there we are. Twenty-one branches. Uh, oh, we can change the default branch. Um. Wow. But I can't rename it. Oh. Oh well. Yeah. Of course I can't rename it. Um, right. All right, so, um, get, uh, check out, wait, get log will show us what we changed. Get check out, uh, head minus two is over here. Get branch, or get check out with a branch name, um, we'll call this dark chess. And now that we have the dark chess branch, get fetch upstream master. Uh, I guess upstream space master. Okay, cool. Get pull upstream master. No, okay. Um, get fetch upstream master. I think it is. Or merge would work. Okay. Get push origin my new branch which is dark chess which is in sync um, so this is much more up to date than the other thing uh, so it'd be nice to have a remote tracking branch in here too but I don't remember how to do that that's okay so you can see from git log, these are all the changes that have been put in place. I'll have to rebase from time to time, I suppose. But um, now that I've got flick ground, or I guess this isn't really flick ground anymore. It should just be simply chess ground. I should not have renamed it in the first place because uh, I was thinking that I would be able to have multiple uh, repositories forked from a repository, which you can do, but GitHub doesn't like it. Um, so, can I use this dark chess library? Um, where would I go? Um, yeah, where do I go to, um, change what chess ground I'm using? I guess that's in the UI layer. So, uh, chess ground. Actually, what we could do is grep uh, author name Ornicar and then say chess ground um, 
and that will come up with a fairly limited set of results of uh, places that may need to change. Um, Yarn.lock. Okay. Um, package.json. So, how do I do this? Oh, okay, so you have to actually release with a tag number. Apparently. At least Yarn seems to expect you to use tagged releases. Or it makes it easier for you if you have tagged releases. Um, which is going to challenge my development, but what can you do? Um, I thought that there... Is there not like a sub-modules thing? Oh, it's called git modules. So, okay. Chess ground is somewhere in here, right? No, scale of chess is here. The UI must import node modules differently. Um, okay, so this is all done in the UI. Um, all right, so I think this goes through NPM to go get the dependency list. Um, so, uh, package.json, then we go over here to um, chest ground. Okay. But how does this resolve dependencies? Um, I guess we have to go to the build file. Um, and this somehow defines how we use yarn to pull in our dependencies. Okay. We're learning new stuff. So if I want to have my own chess ground, then I have to define my own means of getting it, I guess. Yarn install gulp target. Okay, well, I guess I was a bit hasty there. So there's package.json, but what is what else is there inside? Um, there's node modules, gulp file. Gulp file defines where you get all your dependencies, right? Um... No, apparently not. Strange. Um, okay. Lee chess round. I'm very confused by that. Why can't there be... <laughs> well, that would be too simple. Um... Leech us round. No, I saw leech us round right there. Unless I just hallucinated this. This is definitely here. Um, okay, boot.js. Leech us round. But where does this get imported from? Um, man, if it's not one thing, it's another. Also, you'd think that. 
Um, well, okay. Yeah, there's a finite list of places that you'd need to update to pull in the dark chess library instead of that. Um, no, most of those are actually in the readme file and have no functional impact. It's probably just the git here. Um, oops, it's probably just this uh, git URL. Where what I need to do is say, I'm not going to use that repo, but apparently, um, because I misnamed my repo, despite my best intentions, um, it's going to have to be flick ground. And um, now I have to find a way to check out the branch called dark chess which is not going to work that well either. Um, uh, yeah, I know. I don't see where I could go. This is tricky. Uh, okay. So... I think I'm gradually running into one problem after another here. Um, so let me try to do things in a reasonable fashion. I want dark chess, or I want, honestly I want master to be the upstream master, but I would want to check out the dark chess branch for my own development. However, I'm not sure how to check out a branch when um, importing node modules. I think I'd have to uh, have versioned releases or some kind of release or tag or something that says use this version. Um, uh, there's got to be an answer here somewhere. Oh wow. Oh wait, no, yarn.lock must be an automatically generated file. Um, package.json still the same file um, okay chess ground um, carrot 6.4 so I need to figure out how to do package.json for a git branch. Um, depend on a branch or a tag. So we add the... oh, that's cool too. So yeah, let's do it this way then. Um, Wait, is this not the same place where... I'm so confused. Apparently that's not where I define my dependency. Uh, but I instead want to go into node modules to define my dependency. Because this has the URL in it. Whereas apparently this one doesn't have the URL. Oh, wait. No, it's got the Leela URL, but... Um, my node modules for round have uh, this. This is what needs to change. This needs to be uh, flick ground dot get um, pound and then this needs to say dark chess. Um, Now, I'm not sure what generates this package.json. Evidently, it's not this package.json that was already here. Um, 
Is there anything that's not so deeply nested? I don't think so. Um... So... Okay, chest ground 6-4 or better. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm being silly. So that file we were just looking at, this one, yeah, that's great and all, but this is the URL we want. Um, but can't we define that in this package.json? That we have as a dependency uh, chess ground. Colon, and then the fully qualified. Yeah, I think this is what we're looking for. Now, I'm not sure why that's all in red there. Um, okay. I think that has to be done. And then I've got to go back to um, this, which is a generated file. Put this back to how it was. Since uh, we want to reflect how, what the actual state of this is. So uh, our dependency manager can figure out what we got to do. Um, oh, except this, I don't want to use get. I want to use uh, HTTPS. Um, OK. So now we go back to um, build.sh, which defines all the various stuff we might want to do for building. Uh, I think UI build is just the command that we want to run here. So rebuild the UI, but using um, <laughs> using the same exact library, but from a different source. The ultimate goal would be that um, Actually, do I have to change that dependency in all of the files? I think I do. Not just in the round file, but I think for all the modules, I'll have to make that same package.json change to say where to go find chess ground. It's slightly inconvenient, but, you know, we got a very large project, so what can you do? But yeah, this dark chess, I think, is what... Um, but I want to be the default branch. It's exactly in sync with um, the upstream master. Uh, so this is the library that I want to change to be able to hide the opponent's pieces in blindfold mode. And then secondarily, um, to do some other cool stuff. Okay. Can I find module chess ground slash util? Um, so what does this mean? Does this mean I have to do, like tag this somehow or something? got 82 releases. Um, that's a lot of releases there. Uh, we got tags. Yeah, was there some difficulty pulling in the dependency, I wonder? Cannot find module chess ground detail. Um, well, let's see. Oh, this is because my repository is misnamed. 
Um, geez. Is this something I'm able to rename? Yes. Thank goodness. So I'm not changing, not chasing dependencies endlessly. So I've got chess ground, which is forked from flick ground, which is forked from chess ground. Um, and now I want to edit this uh, to remove the usage of the word flick. And go back and say UI build. I wonder, can I specify that I want to build only one of these UI um, submodules? Probably not. Probably the way it's configured, I don't have that level of uh, granularity. But all I want is in blindfold mode for these pieces of the opponent to not be there. I mean, yes, I can't drag them, but they shouldn't even be renderable at all. Or they should have some sort of special tag that says don't render these. And then you could apply that to all the pieces if you really wanted to, but basically, uh, if you're playing blindfold mode, and if the server's telling you where all your pieces are and what all the legal moves for each piece are, you don't care about your opponent's pieces being on the board. That's extra work that doesn't need to be done in that case. But also, I just want to exp test that I can um, make pieces not exist that previously existed there. Oh, good. UI round. Oh, never mind. I was going to say that did successfully compile, but I am mistaken. Um, cannot find module chess ground slash util. Okay. Grip. Flip ground. Please tell me it's not there. It's not. Okay. Events.js. So. Node modules chess ground is still there. That's good. <sighs> Maybe get remote v. Okay, this is actually pulling from. Well, that's not possible. Um, it couldn't. There's no way this could have pulled in all that information about all three repos. Um, get branch dash v dark chess is I'm so confused how could it possibly have known it can't um, all right so let's go over here grab this copy that nope copy as a HTTP URL um, not that I even need to do this, but git remote remove origin git remote add origin of this Oh wait, that's not right um, Yeah, so we're still at this point in the Leela project um, so this is weird. I thought that I'm in chess ground, but apparently I'm not. I'm just pulling in my chess ground dependency through node if I can, which who knows if I can. I can't even identify what thing we pulled in through node. Um, so let's nuke that. Uh, and go refetch it. And hopefully it'll pull the right one this time. Um, okay, so it's building, what is it? I think it lists all the module names as it tries to build them, right? <sighs> details, details.
task round is not in your gold file. Okay, let's just do a build then. Like, okay, these are all the apps like Site, Challenges, or Chat, Challenge, Notify, Learn, Insight, and so forth are all the apps, so to speak, that it's building um, as parts of the UI. And then I guess uh, Gulp is used to obtain the resources and Yarn does the build. Um, so somewhere in here we'll see a Gulp for a round and then attempt to build the round module. And hopefully gets chess ground from the correct place for this purpose. Man, this must be so tricky for somebody who's got much more complicated requirements than myself. Alright, so that's still undefined. Uh, CDUI round. So if you do list node modules, chess, uh, there is no chess ground there. So it failed to uh, obtain chess ground. Um, okay. What does build do? It says yarn install, or cdui slash round, yarn install, and then yarn run compile. Um... So, is there anything special I have to do here? <sighs> Jeez. Well, I guess since I'm here already, um, I can make my own custom version of this that just says I'm going to build one app. And that way, at least this fails as fast as possible. Um, wait. That should... What's it doing? It's still building all the modules, even though I told it... Um... Even though I've removed all the apps other than round, it's still building stuff. Uh, okay, so I can skip all of this. Where's apps used? Just down there? Um, sequential. It doesn't matter. So. We'll say, I don't know, ts apps1 equals empty string, ts apps2 is equal to empty string, and now will it build faster? And only build my module of choice and fail doing so much quicker? Yes. Okay, cannot find module chess ground slash util. Fine. Um, I guess if Node can't find the resource, I'll just have to install it myself. Which seems clunky, but, you know, we'll do what we have to. Oh, I'm not even sure how that would work. Um, but yeah, Node wouldn't know about a library. Okay, so we're, we're pretty far afield at this point. Get diff here. Get checkout. Um, package.json. 
and then we'll do this build. Um, I didn't mean to change directory, but instead just do the build. So the next thing is I will need um, need after having done all that building to change UI slash build to not try to fetch the resources out of node because um, that's not the version of the library that I want. Uh, package.json I'm sure there is a better way to do this too. That's what gets me. Like, here we see dependencies, chess ground 6.4. But, um, I'm going to actually end up going into the dependency itself and modifying this, so. Which I know is inadvisable, and I know there's got to be a better way to do this. Um, And if I run into too many problems this way, I will look up what the right way is to do it. Um, oh wait, no, okay, so that, I keep forgetting. This is not a copy of chess ground from GitHub. This is a copy of chess ground from Node. So I want to go back and remove chess ground with kill it with fire. Get checkout. Or get clone. Um, okay. So we'll get chess ground this way. Get checkout. Uh, dark chess. And this is how we're able to do development on this dependency, but I want to make sure it builds before I go too far. Um, so what I'm looking to do now is when I say build, um, that I don't want it to go install the dependencies, I just want it to compile the code, if that's feasible at all. Um, okay, so yeah, I'm not looking to build TS, this is just build, yarn, install, mutex, and then gulp target. But gulp might not be the appropriate way to attack trying to compile this stuff. Um, So we want to go to Leela UI round. Um, look at the gulp file, and uh, okay. So this defines the tasks dev and prod. We're doing a dev build for sure. Um, turn build bundle pipe. Um, <laughs> okay. I'm beginning to see why the Flick Chess developer had so many challenges. Um, working with this stuff. Alright, so we want to take a look not just at that gulp file, but actually at package.json and make the change I made earlier. Um, oh! Wait, wait, wait. Um, 
Can I do something similar here? Let's say link to a local repository. Um, so we've got like common game and types. Could I do that too? Um, in which case, I would actually want to move um, Lila UI. Actually, we're in UI. Move round node modules chest ground over here. Um, it's like if I go into common. I guess there is no common remote repository, but um, yeah, I can at least link to chess ground that's hosted in the same. Okay, this might work. So my goal here is to verify: can I do a build using a local chess ground? That looked successful. So that means I can both develop chess ground and compile using it. Um, no, there is no chess ground slash util, however. Um, but I'm not sure that that's the end of the world. Uh, yeah, how do I get chess ground dot slash util? If I go, this is forked from that, which is forked from this, which has no util directory. But I'm sure if it's built um, for Node, Node has a separate util directory, I'm sure. Um, let me do the proper build again. Get status, get diff package to JSON. Uh, that's not it. We want to go into round and diff package.json keep this link around get checkout and this time I'm curious what is in that um, what's in that util directory that's ever so important that I can't build without it Um, okay, that's strange. Um, what have I changed here? I've changed nothing. That's so weird. Uh, it's not good. Uh, so if I uh, get diff UI slash build show that I haven't significantly changed how we're doing the build um, yeah now I'm confused at this point why it won't pull in chess ground it should obtain that from um, well, let's see is there already a module in place? Um, UI round uh, node modules. It's just ground here. Yes. Uh, that's my problem. It's not going to install something that's already installed because it doesn't know that I have the wrong version installed. Okay. Now it should know. Um. Grep, flip, ground. Um, yeah, it's not there. Grep, flip, ground in my UI. I don't expect that I'm going to find it there. Uh, that's not what I wanted. UI slash flick still has it, but that's not part of what I'm intending to deploy. That's cool that I could still use that if I wanted to, but that's not what I'm aiming to use. 
Um, okay, but apparently to get any of this to work, well, I mean, this was using a different build technology anyway. Um, okay, get diff UI round. Shows I haven't changed anything. Um, I guess I'll have to revert uh, UI slash build back to what it used to be. This is absurd and should make no difference, but um, if it does make a difference, we'll benefit from having things back in the initial state. I still can't imagine why this would perform any better than what I last did, but um, previously I deleted chess ground and installed my own copy. Um, and that failed, and then I rolled back to the previous package.json, and that was enough to um, well, I'm not sure. Somehow there has to be a way to to get Node to recognize that it's got the wrong version. Maybe I have to go into my uh, .npm folder uh, to clean out the old stuff. Uh, whatever cached files there may be from my last attempt to build using the local chess ground. I keep going back and forth because it, I don't have two build environments to set up here. Um, all right, so grep chest ground. Um, this seems like a bad idea. way more references than I need it. Um, what I need to find is where is it still trying to reference some other version of this library. Um, so somewhere under UI, oh, wait, dot dot needs to be a literal dot dot. Okay. So yeah, it's, nowhere is it attempting to do that. Um, let's say move UI chess ground. Uh, just up into this ancestor here. And attempt the build again. Um, this time, back to the simpler version of this build that doesn't build the whole world, but just builds what we need. Um, maybe Node was confused on account of there being a chess ground already in that UI directory. That wouldn't make any sense, but maybe it was. No. Okay. Um... Why don't I take one of the chess grounds from the other node modules uh, and put that in place? Uh, well, actually, first touch UI round um, package. Sure, just see like if there's some attempt to resolve that differently based on the date and time on the file. There's not. All right, so. CD UI round node modules root. What is this? Oh, it's a symbolic link of some sort. Um, okay, it's not there anymore. 
weird. Okay. Um, not sure how I'd obtain that symbolic link. Oh, I told it to put a link in place, but then when I tried to delete the link, um, all right. So ls um, ui round node modules chess ground. There is no such chess ground. So copy ui something else that uses chess ground. We'll say I don't know chat. Node modules, chess ground. Wait. Ah, find node modules, chess ground. Um, now we want to locate this. And then search for those just ending in chess ground. Yeah, there's all kinds of uh, modules. In fact, there's round two, which we haven't built in forever. That's not what we want to build. Let's say copy this uh, into um, to round. Copy the whole contents, clear, uh, ls ui round node modules, chess ground, there better be a util something here. util.d.ts and util.js. Now, do these exist in this version? Here's util.js. So I'm not sure why this deploys differently. I guess all there's no source directory. Or is there? Yes, there is. Um, all right. So how do I do a chess ground build here? Oh, this is what got removed earlier. Get branch, we get status, get checkout, everything here. Um, that's not right either. So, okay. It's an empty directory. Not sure how that got emptied. Um, then copy this as then get clone chess ground, which apparently requires a password just to clone it. I'm not sure I understand why. Uh, just to download the files, you need the password. But okay, so then we have uh, chess ground. How do we build this? When all spells read the directions. It's great that there's all this source code, but what do you do to build um, chess ground? npm install save chess ground. I guess this is how you install it. You want Node to manage this. Um, wait, no, that's how you install it from there. How do I build and install it from source? These are the things I want to compile um, if I need to. Alright, 
Do I have any notifications here? Yeah, I do. Um, node module from source. There's, this can't be an original issue. From, I don't know, local source. Node module compile. not looking for something stupidly complicated. I just want to be able to node module, I don't know, local something, something. I want to take my local copy and install it. npm install, but I don't want to install it this way. I want to install from my source. Um, I suppose I should just use an IDE at this point. Like, the reason I use a oh, command line is that I have the visibility to everything and I'm not, uh, an IDE doesn't impede me, but it's clear I don't understand how to troubleshoot this anyway. And it's clear there isn't any supporting documentation about how to install your own node module short of publishing it to um, in the NPM site and um, it's just ridiculous that you have to go out to a third-party site um, to install something Uh, updating local packages. Right, no, but I want to install my package from source, but I don't want to publish it on this, like, I don't want to have to publish my changes to the internet just to be able to test them. That's ridiculous. Publishing. Updating the package, etc., etc., but yeah. Private modules, fine. If I have to make it private, okay. Setting up your package. It's a scoped package. Uh, publishing. Okay, so use npm publish in your directory. Oh, but again, this this is not the sort of private publication stuff that I'm looking for. I just want to be able to use a local directory for development. Um, ay, ay, ay. package. A folder containing a program described by package.json. A gzip tarball URL etc etc. Um, okay, so I guess because everything I'm touching is all JavaScript, and this is my first like exposure to web development, basically. Um, since this is all JavaScript, it doesn't really matter. Um, this is what I want to link to is just ground source. There is no sense of compiling a JavaScript file. Yes, you can use Clojure to optimize these files, but they're it's a script. You don't compile a script. So, um, so let's take a look at what we got. View uh, gulp file. 
and this isn't what I want. I want to say view um, package.json. And instead of chess ground linking to the node site, I'll say link colon dot dot chess ground slash source. That's, I think, what I missed last time. And then if I say UI build, it should resolve the dependency. Couldn't find a pa Oh, there's no package.json there. Okay, fine. Um, so I want to edit UI round package.json. And apparently I have to reference chess ground here, which in turn means that in chess ground I have to do my own stupid compilation thing, which fine. Um, copy a source everything here. There we go, it's all compiled now. So Node is able to play with it. Without discovering that dependencies are missing. Okay, we're missing chess ground slash types. But uh, UI chess ground. Oh, it does not have a types file. Okay, so there is some notion of compiling this somehow. Um, So what do we have elsewhere? UI analyze node modules chess ground. Um, yeah, how do I do this? Well, this might be what's being referred to in the other build. Um, so let's take a look at UI build again. Um, I think that's what I'm missing through all of this, is that I have to build uh, chess ground this way. Um, I could be wrong. I probably am. That's a really big shot in the dark. Uh, so CD UI chess ground. Status, get, uh, we'll just say remove star.js, get status, get checkout, uh, go file, status, okay, we're back in our default state there. Okay, yeah, well, this builds chess ground as TypeScript. And having built chess ground as TypeScript, um, okay, compile is not found. Well, how have we done so far, though? Have I succeeded in spite of myself? No, I've not. <laughs> that was too optimistic. Um, command compile not found. All right. Um, maybe do it like this. Okay, that didn't work either. Um, but yeah, I want to take chess ground and ensure that it's in whatever state it needs to be in such that um, the round module is able to consume it. Um, Let's 
so we've got this out here. If you built these releases, you can actually download the release and see what's in it. But um, I think the point is that there is a way to compile all these scripts maybe using closure or something, but you want TypeScript out of it. Um, is there a readme here? This is not for the faint of heart, we'll say. <laughs> um, okay. Um, so I searched for closer, searched for chess ground. Um, I think I need to at this point. Um, oh, I had an idea. What was I thinking of? I forgot what my point was. Grip closure. Oh, right. I was going to consult the onboarding documentation, um, which you can find over in this repo on the wiki. I mean, there's no way that this is mentioned there, but just in case. UI development for all right. Build with a custom chess ground. Ah, uh, so and enable auto recompile. This is the thing I was missing. I was able to get the link in place. Um, but what I was missing is that my chess ground has to have this TS, oh, uh, TypeScript compiler, which I don't have installed. Um, okay, TSC, sudo apt install node type. Okay, so we get the TypeScript compiler. Please finish downloading this and installing it. <laughs> Go figure. The one moment where I need to install... Oh, never mind. We found it. It's just a one simple library. Alright, so let me say sudo back to leeches, um, and then see the lila ui chess ground, and then from here typescript compiler watch apparently is not the right command, or I'm just getting a ton of context that I would not have expected to get. Um, that's special. I think it's double dash watch, like the usage suggests. Or dash w. Why am I getting so much feedback? Um, when I scroll up, I'm not even... I'm not getting the what was previously there in my shell. The shell is not working very well. Um, oh, see, path to chess ground. Um, man, TSC, watch. Watch input files. Okay. 
yarn.lock. Uh, I'm not sure why this got created. Um, let's get rid of it. And then say TSC watch. Um, and then say two a dot text. Two dot ts not found. Um, compilation complete. Watching for file changes. Wait, did I get this symbol wrong? Maybe I did. Okay, so let's say UI build again. JSON. Okay, this does link to chess ground, which is good. Um, okay, let's go to tsconfig.json. Fine. Um, So what's the deal here? I mean, this is all pretty cool stuff. Um, oh, I guess, yeah, I need to remove the chess ground that was in the U the round module now. Um, CD round. Actually, no, just CD round node modules chess ground. Okay, so that was a symbolic link. Um, which will get put back in place by package.json. I'm still confused how TSC um, works there. Enable auto recompile. I guess I should follow these literally. Um, so let's try that. See, that's my problem. Is I can't find any of these modules that are necessary for the automatic recomp recom recompilation. Um, but I think that's because I prematurely... Well, I didn't follow the steps here. Um, get status. So let's say remove node modules, chest ground again. Oh, it's already removed. I'm not able to remove something that's already removed. Um, git checkout package.json. Okay, and now build with the standard chess ground. Um, 
actually, to ensure some degree of success here, um, analyze node modules chest ground. It's going to go into node modules here. And then we're going to go back and say build. Then we're going to follow the directions from a clean slate. And if these directions don't work, we're going to ask why they didn't work. <laughs> there might be a good reason. It might be something simple. Um, so gulp apparently enables automatic recompilation. Not sure how that's any improvement over what we were previously doing, but okay. And then next we need to do this. Okay, is this done yet? Still not done. Yeah, I don't get it. I guess it takes a while to consume all this data from the internet and install it properly. Well, it's, I mean, it says it's finished. Does it mean that it's finished or no? I guess I'll terminate that and presume, presume that it's finished. I mean, so it took... Yeah. Finish default. Oh, I guess I'm in an interactive shell or something here. Whatever. Okay, so next we want to take these commands. Oops. Nope, nope, nope. I freak... I blew it. Um... Leela uh, UI chest ground node modules and then say gulp again. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to conflict. Yeah, okay, so this generates the same error. I didn't exactly 100% perfectly follow things, but I don't think the fact that I did this out of order makes a difference. It would suck if that did make a difference. Alright, but what if I like link to, I don't know, analyze node modules chess ground. And say gulp this way. Okay, that's also problematic. I don't understand that either. Um, okay, let's get rid of the link and say gulp. Does this get it from the correct location? No, that's still broken. Um, um, Okay, there is no such thing there. Uh, if we copy... Oh, right, right, that was a bad link. That's why this failed. This needs to be Leela UI Analyze. If we say gulp, this should work, using the chess ground that's in the other... Um, okay, that still failed. 
inexplicably. Um, so ooh, let's try this. Or we're going to, instead of copying, or instead of linking, let's just copy. Oh. Apparently I purged that accidentally. Um. Hmm. Nothing's ever easy. But apparently I have deleted... Oh. Okay. What's in there? What's in this directory? Everything's in this directory. So... Why can't I do this? Oh, it's saying I can't... Wait, no. UI analyze node modules. Where the heck am I? Oh, I misspelled analyze with a Z. Like an American. Uh, that's pretty great. Um, Alright, so... If I spell things correctly and then say gulp, this should compile without any problem. The fact that I'm linking to a directory as opposed to... Well... Okay. Yeah, so that was successful. Um, but I think also successful would be if I were just say, create a symbolic link and say gulp. I think this would be fine too. Because the directory contains the resources that it needs to contain. Um, but when I go link to um, UI slash chess ground, I think this is where things fell apart. Um, because this UI chess ground. Uh, it does not contain nearly as many files as the other chess grounds contain. Um, so how do I do compilation? Uh, da -da, da -da 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 -da. Okay. Um... If I just do the naive thing and say TypeScript compile the stuff. Um, okay, so that expects TypeScript files. Which raises the next question, um, which had me puzzled from the outset. But if I'm looking at uh, analyze um, node modules. Uh, chess ground. We have TypeScript files here. Was it Clojure that produced those? I mean, what is it that makes all the TypeScript files? Um, UX and UI issues. Oops, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for documentation. Uh, I mean, it's great that there's UI development for really experienced web UI developers, which is like the polar opposite of where I stand. Um, but I should be able to figure out some of this. Now Leela uses Scala, but we're talking about TypeScript in this case, so... 
that's all good stuff to know. I should look at that at some point, but that, this isn't the time for that. Closure is... I've continually misspelled that as well. Um, okay. Closure. Command not found. But I thought Google spells closure with a J, doesn't it? Um, like, I could swear that, whatever, um, I'll look at the Windows build, just in case. Yeah, it doesn't mention anything about JavaScript. Moderators, email admins, social media admins for writers, sysadmins, oh, this is cool. Event log, operating expenses, video library, and puzzle tags. Okay, so... Ah, but... Google Closure? I can swear, this... Yeah, this uses a J. I'm sure if I like put in Google Closure, it's going to correct me and tell me... Uh, well, I'm mistaken. Okay. Okay, so what's the difference? I know there's got to be a huge difference if they spelled two things two very different ways. Um... What's the big difference? It's no longer on Google code. It's the closure programming language. Right. Yeah, I didn't think there was... Whereas if you have the closure tools from Google, or the closure compiler, this compiles JavaScript. So these go in exactly the opposite directions. The Closure Compiler takes JavaScript and compiles it to TypeScript, whereas the Closure Language is a means for generating scripts in a more strongly typed fashion. Okay, so how do I install this? Download the app. Oh. Um, yeah, no, I didn't actually mean I wanted to download it on this computer. I want to download it elsewhere. Um, that's my mistake. Apparently this is, oh, it's just a zip file. Um... But why would they make it available this way as opposed to other ways? That they, I don't know. So, um, we're going to get this zip file and unzip it. Alright, so there's the closure compiler. Oh, it even comes with a readme. Um, so we're going to move copying readme and the closure compiler into the closure directory. Uh, um, okay, and this... I mean, this language can't have changed too often. Uh, do you mean the command closure? Uh, I don't think so. Ubuntu has a command called closure, which I'm sure just confuses everything.
So, what does this do? I'm sure this is a different closure. Um, than the Google Closure Library. Okay, here's the result I was looking for. It was the list of all the packages. Um, Lisp dialect for the JVM. So that's referring to something that's possibly even the same closure project that we were seeing earlier that was doing the opposite. This is a strongly typed language. Well, I guess that's not even the opposite. You're not like taking a strongly typed language and compiling it into scripts or minifying it and such. This is just a different language, um, which is not what we're looking for. Okay. So, yeah, actually that's not what I meant. Um, so, I guess I need to go back to Google's documentation and work through the UI. Oh. Wait, no, I don't want to do that. I want to do this from a command line. If possible. Nope. That's... Oh. Are you kidding me? Is there not a headless version of this tool? I just want to do it from command line, if that's okay. I don't want to hit buttons, things I don't understand. Yeah. Java jar, compiler jar, etc., etc. Um, I think that's all I want. So we're going to go back into Leela UI. Here, go to chess ground and then say Java jar and then go get to the closure compiler uh, and run that on all my source. Assuming that that's a reasonable way to try to use this. Oh, I need to provide the double dash JS flag before my sources. Um, I mean, the compiler should be able to figure out that those are the targets of what I want to create. Um, please tell me I don't have to run the, a script that does that compile thing for every single file and produces an output file for every file. Might have to. Um, okay, so this this is more than I wanted. Um, okay, what happens if I just don't provide any arguments? It's waiting for input via standard in. Uh, help? There we go. Um, it's a pity this wraps at 80 columns, but, or column 80, but, um, I 
not specified, it's written a standard out. That's kind of not useful. Um, plus, this is uh, exporting to JavaScript, or I really want TypeScript output. Um, yeah, no, I'm looking for a more strongly typed language. Um, so this doesn't surprise me that's not documented there. It's probably documented somewhere, I just don't know where to find it. Build TS seems like... How could this not be it? Okay, echo. Just echoes to the console what it's about to execute. Set dash ev. Change directory to there. Yarn install. Then yarn run compile. Um, I'm going to have to guess. Well, yeah, I don't know how this works at this point. Chessground doesn't have any dependencies, as far as I know. It might, but I'm not aware of any. Maybe it's got, like, all the dependencies in the world, and that might be a thing worth knowing, but as far as I know, that's not the case. Um, so... I think I'm hitting a point, though, where... Like... The tools at my disposal aren't giving me nearly enough information to make progress. Um, or even discover what the problem is. I mean, saying that files are missing, which is not helpful. Um, so, yeah, if I take a look at UI round package.json. Uh, JSON. If I say link this, I'm not sure what more I could try. Command compile not found. Um, so this yarn run version of yarn. Um, yeah, yarn run compile. Do I have an outdated version of yarn? No, this is, this is v0.26.1, which I think is the latest version. Um... I guess I need to actually visit this documentation and figure out what it is about yarn that, um, yeah, yarn run and then compile is the name of the script, but apparently I don't have a compile script. Um, let's take a look at a different example, like chess. U, UI chess. Um, there's no compile file here either. <sighs> okay, so how is it that this works for those other? Like, you can do this for common and for chess. Let's just take a look at Gander at Common. And then compare this to UI Chess Group. You see that files that we have are very different. We have yarn.lock, which is a generated file. We have package.json, JSON, JSON is how it's normally pronounced. I'm, I'm getting lazy here. Um, 
does have this TS config. Um, up in common. Wait. Oh, in UI common. TS config. I'm going to just copy that over. Into um, chest ground. That should make no difference whatsoever. But if it does, then maybe the compile step won't completely. Yeah. No, that doesn't work. Build TS chest ground is just no good because there's no compile command. But somehow these other things can compile, just not test ground itself. Like if I say common and then chest ground. Um, this doesn't blow up. TSC is the TypeScript compiler, apparently. Oh, so we're not using Clojure. We're using TSC. The documentation stated. Um, all right, so let's go for look at TSC usage. <sighs> TypeScript compiler wrapper. I shouldn't have to install it this way. I mean, I installed it for my system. Um, what TSC did I install? Version 2.1.6, whatever that means. Which TSC? Man TSC. Yeah, this is the TypeScript compiler. Um, Okay, so you use a TSC double dash out file. Um, but you provided a TypeScript. Wait, no. Out file. Concatenate and emit output to single file. All right, so let's try something. This can't possibly be this difficult to use. Specified include paths for... Right. Um, type script compiler example. Uh, that's not it. Fine, I guess we're stuck with back with the same documentation. But yeah, this takes TypeScript files and compiles them into JavaScript. So what I need is not the TypeScript compiler, even though that's what's being used elsewhere. I need Google Clojure to produce the TypeScript files that can be compiled into minified JavaScript. Or whatever. Um, okay. hesitate to do this, but um, and 
let's just build one of these. Let's say anim.js. Um, there's got to be a better way to use this. There has to be a better way to use this. do because we're done with the wiki because that's not telling us anything additional this doesn't say how to um, I don't think this says how to build multiple files I shouldn't have to do this sort of thing just to compile a file getting started Compiler Service API. Yeah, that's not what I'm looking to use, honestly. I should not have to create a web page to use this. Advanced topics, compilation levels, advanced compilation. Um. You'd think that somewhere in here there'd be a way to say compile multiple files. Only because I'm trying to figure out the right way to do this. Um, and so that's why I'm being so rigorous here. Not because I can't issue the commands one by one, but because I feel that like somebody's come up with an example of the right way to do this. And because all these examples talk about JavaScript, I want to compile TypeScript, uh, which I know is a supported flavor, but I just don't know um, what's the right way to do this. I don't even care about annotations and such. I just want this. I'm going to give it a directory of JavaScript files. I would like it to produce a equivalent set of TypeScript files. Um, Yeah, I know there could be dependencies between the JavaScript files, which is why I want to be clear that I have all the dependencies set up the right way. Although I guess in my case that I don't have this kind of complicated stuff, but I still don't know how to produce, um, well I guess uh, tsconfig says uh, how to configure this, um, Let's 
it's just amazing to me that they'd make a compiler and make it very difficult to use like this. So we got environment, compilation level, etc., etc. But um, let's see. Oh, but that's for the TypeScript compiler. Um, that's the opposite of what I'm doing. I think. Yeah, I shouldn't need to use that file. Um, there's no way to configure during compilation to use that tsconfig, which makes sense because we're not using tsc, we're using Google Flowsure. Um, so fine. Um, but now the default language that it compiles to is not TypeScript. Um, if I go to this help here, this by default compiles, I think, to EMS EA script. Oh, where is it? I saw this here earlier. There's a EMC. Okay. Language in, language out. Yeah, I'm not wanting to compile to EMCA script 5. I want to compile to TypeScript. Uh, which I guess is experimental. Okay, so we'll say um, language out equals MC script six typed. JavaScript will be source start.js. Which um, has to be escaped. Um, no inputs matched. Oh, I'm in the source directory. That explains why. All right, so. ES6 is only supported for trans transpilation to a lower EMCA script version. Set language out to ES3, ES5, or ES5 strict. Yeah, so I'm not sure how the TypeScript got generated for these other modules. Some wizardry went on. I think it's fair to say that Lee Chess is pretty advanced in what it does, and even though from a user perspective, I find it pretty easy to hack it, and like, I turned off the blindfold. That's not nearly as sophisticated as developing a robust application in the first place. Um, so yeah, I think a mission of even getting blindfold mode to, um, not make the opponent's pieces part of the set of pieces that get rendered uh, is just a lost cause. Um, there's no way... I mean, yes, I can see where I can move my pieces. You can even turn on the highlights of where the pieces could move. Uh, although the JavaScript currently is written to um, 
not generate those. You could add code to generate them. Because um, you have all the data you need at your disposal. You, it would take a fairly significant script to re-enable the legal move highlighting, but you could do it with effort. Um, but, you know, I think the key point here is that trying to change this chess ground library is not for not for the faint of heart, and I don't know. This kind of makes me want to go pursue um, uh, what other developers were talking about with like Elm, or what I was looking into earlier, just looking into web server development as opposed to UI development, because all this UI stuff they use is pretty advanced, and it changes from time to time, and a handful of people who are very experienced web developers have this in much better hands than I can. Um, so where, what I was able to make progress with, beyond just getting my LeechS instance to build, um, I did create a new variant called Dark Chess. Um, and I implemented the rule set, but there's really no point in doing further testing um, until, um, well, let's go look at my definition of the rules. There's no point in testing this if we can't hide the pieces. I mean, the rules are pretty simple. Just, there's no such thing as check, that the game ends when a king is captured, that there's no concept of insufficient winning material, and that's that. Pretty simple to set up in terms of server-side code. Um, the tricky part would be the UI rendering, which I spent a while looking at yesterday and today. Figured out that yes, we can have visibility to the data we need to to, to add classes or remove classes from the pieces, whichever is necessary to make them revealed or hidden. Um, however, um, adding CSS classes to the pieces is not something that's really feasible um, outside of uh, chess ground. So in, a, in order to be able to classify the pieces or have chess ground even identify which pieces are attacked or rather have it benefit from some sort of fed-in information about these pieces are attacked and need to be shown, other ones can be hidden. Um, with regard to all that, and um, you know, there's, I, I, I basically am not able to modify chess ground, so any solution I'd have to come up with would be something written entirely in JavaScript, mutating a board to add and remove pieces just based on what's visible. And while that's the purest possible solution, that's also the most complicated solution um, because it requires you to constantly be adding and removing pieces and keeping track of the board state that should be rendered. And I mean, yes, that's the best way to do it, but I wanted to have a simple proof of concept first where I change chess ground give it the ability to uh, hide or unhide or apply styles to pieces. And then um, uh, once I got that proof of concept, then maybe trudge down the other path of having a JavaScript library that adds and removes the pieces as they become visible or hidden and figure out what the relative complexities of the two approaches are and whether it is merited at all to have uh, the pieces added and removed every single time. And does this like change how the rules are implemented, for instance, and um, how do captures work, and a whole great many things. Um, 
like if you're changing what pieces are visible okay well I guess anything you could capture with the exception of an ampassant pawn um, would be in your line of sight um, the one thing that would be tricky I guess is if you had a pawn and your opponent moved a pawn through ampassant you'd still have to have visibility to that thing even if the only way you could capture it was by an ampassant move um, this is so confusing but yeah oh but my point is that some things like when you do a capture that the move list shows that an X there when you do a capture um, you hear a capture noise basically I, I don't want to remove the pieces from the board unless we can prove that there's no ill effect from doing so but the only way to prove that is to have a baseline where you have the pieces in place but they're invisible and then you contrast that to um, what happens if you remove the pieces and do things still work or do they break under those conditions um, be able to do a regression test that's the easiest way um, to make sure that you're not introducing a defect is to be able to establish a baseline and then start optimizing from that baseline but I can't even get the baseline in place because I can't compile chess ground um, with my own functionality and uh, adding APIs that allow you to hide or add styles to pieces which I think could be useful in general um, like you don't want to see just that a king is attacked some beginners would like to see much more than that It'd be useful for training to be able to see look at all the pieces that are attacked and defended and see it on a piece by piece basis instead of looking at well we're going to add these boxes around the piece that say hey you can move to the square and it's attacked and no you want to highlight the pieces themselves to draw the most possible attention to the piece anyway i'm rambling um but yeah in terms of javascript development uh, i've got an incredible amount to learn uh, sure i could pick it up but what's the point because uh, I could learn my own way of doing it but I've also got to learn the way that they approach it here where somehow they're producing these TypeScript files um, and they do say they're using Clojure which is a helpful hint but um, using a third-party tool that's I don't know uh, I suppose there's probably a better way. And TypeScript is highly appealing. There's no time to rewrite all of Lee Chess using TypeScript and Elm and better technologies, I guess. But um, eventually, Lee Chess might move in that direction. But that's a large effort. So, yeah, we got the rules of Dark Chess in place. Uh, I didn't actually test. I probably should test. Is Dark Chess a variant? No, it's not listed here. Let me at least get that in place. That's one thing I can do. Uh, grip, WR, WRI, anti chess modules. Wait, no, 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 no. I want to search inside app. Um, Instead of this, let's say just grep L, and we're going to view and probably edit most of these files. Um, uh, wait, 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 wait. We want W, R, I, and then L to list. And then we'll say A, A, anti chess. And then add to this list um, dark chess. Because we'll make this a 
first class variant. Next file. Um, dark chess here. Um, um, okay. Oh, variant choices with variants. Fine. I guess that's appropriate. Um, AI variant choices. You know, if I trick the game into thinking that uh, Stockfish should actually be really strong at dark chess because it doesn't know. Well, it'll get confused when it came time to capture the king. But um, that would not be a difficult rule for it to implement. Um, Translated variant choices with variants and FEN. My main point of adding it as an AI variant would be that, um, uh, I don't know, I, I could remove it later when it t comes time to um, deploy the change or promote it, but uh, for testing it's really useful to have the AI able to just play against you. Um, We're going to add dark chess to the top bar sorted perf types, I guess. Um, I'm going to add it to um, capture your opponent's king to win. Uh, Uh, okay. And, oh, I guess I have to in introduce um, performance category for dark chess. Um, that's something I'd forgotten to do. Um, So let's, at least I can get all the server side changes in place, but it seems pretty hokey to do that if there's no way to test it. Um, okay, grab wr, actually locate perf type that scala. Um, I think this is the one we want. View this. Anti chess. Okay. 91. Actually, wait. 91, 83. So grab eight lines. And then. <laughs> uh, those are some pretty awesome symbols there. Um, so this is going to be variant 19, I guess. Unless puzzles are already 19. Oh. Yeah, look at that. There's room for exactly one more variant. Not that uh, puzzle has to be the last variant, but... Um, okay. Um, so we have a star. We have a heart. I don't know what I would use for dark chess. I'd want to use it just a space, honestly, but whatever. Um, doesn't matter. Does not matter. Icon character. Well, I don't know if the minus sign is... Be no, it's being used for puzzles. I mean, Dark Chess is pretty puzzling. We'll give it that, but... Um, 
Nah. At least until we have a better symbol to apply. Uh, we'd have to borrow the puzzle symbol. And then this would be including dark chess. Um, as would non puzzle. Um, leaderboardable? Sure, why not? Variants? Yeah, this would definitely be a variant. Um, variant of. Okay. By variant. Um, Okay, so yeah, that introduces um, dark chess as a variant. Uh, get add modules uh, rating. Okay. Um, I think I accidentally included too much. So other rating changes that I don't want in there. Oh no, this doesn't include those. Never mind. I think those changes are under Glico. Um, get add app it's status. So this would show us what I've changed. Um, and now if I refresh this page and rebuild everything, uh, we can see the rebuild take place here live. Um, So, see there's tons of files here that reference anti-chess. Um, I guess it could be worse. So we'll say view those files. Um, Okay, so yeah, apparently I need to copy this. If I want to make a leaderboard, I have to actually write the code to support the generation of the leaderboard. Um, wait, wait, wait. How come anti chess is. Oh, here it is. Say, so how about it's not listed there? It is. Um, but uh, A A N T I H S. Okay. Uh, we need to have an anti chess performance rating here as well. Um, not sure why this is not in some sort of alphabetical order or something. But, um, that's really strange to me. You got correspondence and then you got puzzle down there. Like, Racing Kings was the last one introduced, but it's above Crazy House. So, not sure what to make of that. I probably should have just cannibalized um, anti-chess for the purpose of demoing this, or proof of concepting it, as opposed to a full-scale implementation. Um, in hindsight, that would have been much wiser. But then, would it be an accurate test? Probably. It's probably good enough. Um, Yeah, 
Yeah, so I think... Well, I have opinions. Um, my opinions don't much matter in the grand scheme of things, but... Um, in terms of a scalable application... I don't know, this could be rapidly prototyped, but in terms of scalability, this suffers. <laughs> um, wait, was Crazy House... Crazy House is not the last one added. Um, so confusing. Why, oh why, would you define things like so many different ways? Alright, leaderboard. There we go, dark chess. Uh, next file. Okay, am I searching for anti chess? Yes, I am. Oh, I found it here. Um, uh, next file. Five lines. Um, I guess some people wouldn't believe me if I just cannibalized anti chess and made it into dark chess. They wouldn't believe that it were doable. Um, but. Okay, is there any more anti chess stuff here? Okay. Uh, that's it for this file. Next file. Uh, crazy house. Dark chess. Etc. Etc. This one. Crazy house. Oh, we keep a history. Um, I'm surprised this, oops, 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 man, how was this ever developed in the first place? I guess the point is that, um, more time was spent on doing, I don't know, oh, this is leechess.org, uh, this is me taking a copy of the Lee Chess server and adding another chess variant to it. Or at least attempting to. Um, uh, man, I'm just surprised how much redundancy there is across everything. So... I was trying to demonstrate that at least I've added this new category, but apparently to add it, I've got to add it in like a zillion different places. Um, for it to actually work. Uh, okay, and then this file. Wait, is this the first occurrence of, okay. Okay, next file. Whatever, I'm not going to start making tournaments for this yet. Um, okay, and then after Crazy House, we add in Dark Chess here. Um, I'm just surprised. How many pieces there are to this puzzle. And the fact that this project got so far, it's amazing to me. Well, I guess um, part of what makes the site possible is not just a that people are awesome at coding or something, but they have excellent tests in place. Um, and a very good way of deploying and backing up their server and 
rolling back if they need to, and they have a staging server. It's that all that quality on things that matter um, allows them to get away with stuff like this all over the rest of the place. Um, wait, I goofed up here. Um, so, um, next file. Wait, okay. If not edited this one, I don't think I had to change anything here. I've already edited this file. Don't need to edit that file. Um, don't need to edit this test file. Don't need to edit this test file. Don't need to edit that. Um, don't need to edit this hasher data form. Um, yeah, yeah. We'll find out momentarily if this runs or not. Um, let's see. We got one more chest dot variant dot dark chess that ID contains variant um, data form needs to supply this as something you can select on the form actually this yeah, this would be an analyzable variant um, it's not one where white's better all right. Um, next file. Okay, that's the last one. So now, if I refresh and rebuild everything, um, well, that's rebuilding. Um, get add each of these. Scale is going to be something to add. Get diff perfs updater for ratings needs to be added. Ah, I typoed. Get diff data form. something. Oh, simuls. I hadn't even considered you might do a dark chest simul. That's crazy. You'd be nuts to do it, but it's possible. Um, Diff shows other things I've changed. Um, some more or less experimental than others, um, but okay. Uh, default. Okay, so this file's got to be edited. Uh, oops, wrong file. Uh, wrong console. Um, so default needs to have a default rating for every variant. Get add this again. Um, let's try to build. Dark chess is um, you can only observe your own pieces and the pieces that your pieces are attacking. 
So when you're playing dark chess, most of the board appears blank. Um, it's only where your pieces can move that is actually illuminated. It's also known as fog of war chess. Um, so I'm missing, oops, 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 oops. No, I just want the file name if that's okay. Uh, then this file, line 90. Line 90, there we go. Uh, yeah, add the file, reload, do another incremental compilation. Scale is a great language. Some of the UI stuff that we do on the server is not the best, but scale is pretty great. Progress is being made. Get status, get status. Show that I've edited some things that aren't ready. Edit a lot of things that look ready. Um, except for the fact that like a um, the AI should not be able to play this variant because it would know where all the pieces are and that takes all the fun out of it. Um, but yeah, why don't we go fire up my AI while I'm at it. Um, so we're looking for fishnet. Clear. Uh, get remote. Okay. And which branch am I on? Get checkout master. Get checkout master. Get checkout master. There we go. Get diff. Fine. That's okay. Um, get pull ups. Well, no. Let's say get stash. Get pull upstream master. Get pull upstream master. Get pull origin master. Just kidding. Get push this thing master. Okay, so that's in sync. Um, oh damn! I thought this is gonna merge automatically without a problem. Um. So where is my merge conflict? my AI stuff. Um, it's over here. Oh. Uh, yeah, we don't have EN in the domain anymore. That's okay. Um, geez, really? They kept changing this? I wonder why. Um, That's too bad. Whatever. Um, so we'll say git rebase abort. I have to come back to that at a laser later time. Uh, git stash apply clear. Um, up offline. Yeah. Okay. So this does run offline. Um, Python fish test.py. No good. Cannot import name chart it.
Um, okay, I have to get this dependency, so if I can play with the AI. Um, yeah, we will be able to see this. So, yes, you can select that you want to play Dark Chess against an AI. And you hover over here, and it says Fog of War conceals pieces. Um, oh, where? What was my link for my test server? Ay, ay, ay. I had a Nightbot link to get to link to this instance. Um, it's not this link. That link is dead. Um, but yeah, the server that you're looking for is this server. But it doesn't have any of the rules. I mean, it has the rules that allow you to make illegal chess moves, which are necessary for the variant. But all the Fog of War stuff that's absolutely vital to understanding the game um, isn't there. So, we'll be able to... Uh, there's actually a different site where you can play this. Dark Chess. Um, but it's not a very popular site. And it's to, it was difficult for me to find an opponent for this. And you can't analyze the games or share them with people. Uh, thankfully, the source code is shared. But, um, yeah, you can go to this, like, dark-chess.com. And if you can find an opponent, you can play it there. My idea is to try to bring this to a more popular server um, and to give us full analysis capability for the variant. And that's just a cool variant to popularize. But um, apparently I can't get my AI server going. Uh, Python char debt. What in the world is this? Python 2 slash 3 compatible character encoding detector. Um, Python, no. Wait. That shouldn't be a problem then. If it's not referenced anywhere, then why do we need it? Um, I don't understand. There's something I'm missing there. Um, import requests from dot import utils, etc., etc. Okay, so from Python 2.7, we're attempting to import chardet. Um, do I have a different version of Python installed here somewhere? No, I don't. Um, let's install the Python package chart it and give this a whirl. There we go. Uh, that's fine, whatever. So that's all connected. I remembered how to get dependencies with Python. So yeah, now I can play against an AI. Um, and severely confuse it by playing illegal moves. Um, or moves that would not be legal in a normal chess game. Um, I can't even play against it. Oh. Oh, okay, it did move. Um, Alright, so... Yeah, I can play this forward, play this forward, and it checkmates me, and I just move. And it has to take my king. So, yeah. Dark chess as a concept works. The AI is not fully there. Um, though, it's kind of cheating that the AI knows where all the pieces are at. Um... I mean, again, I don't have this implemented yet. My point of doing the stream is to try to code it. And I can't get the fog of war effects in place, so there's not much point in playing it right now. It would be the same as playing a normal chess game, except you could actually capture a king. Um, 
which is pretty silly, but yeah. So I was more aiming to try to, um, okay, well we don't need the AI up there anymore. Um, so get diff cached, or get status will show us what we've changed. Um, but um, one of these changes in here makes it such that the AI can play the dark chess, which doesn't make sense because there's no working AI for it right now. Um, where was it here? I think this one. AI. Analyzable variants. Sure, of course you could. Hmm. I'm not sure what analyzable variance is used for. Because, like, every variant in theory could be analyzed. Um, but I think this is supposed to say, like, the AI is capable of analyzing certain variants. Um, I think that's the point. Okay, so it's the same file. Oops, no, if we want to look for that string in this file. Oh, okay, so games, fair enough. But I think analyzable is also used to determine, like, can the AI do an analysis? And it's not something we're doing at the moment uh, for this variant. Um, yeah, okay, so. Uh, Dark Chess should not be in this list of game or variants that an AI can analyze. Um, so. Get add that get status. Um, let's take a look at all the code changes that had to take place for this variant to be possible. There's a lot of repetition, and there's a lot of repetition. And did I mention there's a lot of repetition? But yeah. Um, Somewhere in here, we determine, like, is this something that AI can play against you? And part of that might just be, is this an analyzable variant? But I thought there was another place that this is configured. Here, let's view the uh, config.scala. AI variants. Yeah, we need to remove that from AI variants. Variants with variants. Um, that's a really strange name for a variable. Uh, no, I think that's good though. It's still a variant for sure. Um, All right, grep dark chess in modules. And uh, include only the scala files. Um, and we're going to just quickly gloss over everywhere that we mentioned dark chess. Oops. Yeah, how, how do we call this? Dark chess. That's fine. Oops, I did not mean to um, finish editing the file so quickly. All the variants, all the non-puzzle variants, all the leaderboardable variants, all the variants. Okay, good. 
uh, variant of sure next leaderboards next performances next second row fine that's for the little widget that pops up when you hover over a user's name this is for I forget what file we're in TV okay sure that could be a fun thing to put on TV um, rating charts makes sense history you'd have a history of playing these games uh, config. Okay, that's a variant. Filter config. Um, sure, that's still a variant. Um, valid variants. Valid for what? Oh, for the data form for various things. Sure. Um, Performance rating updater, fine. Um, another way of listing variants. Division sensible, sure. Um, In theory, dark chest might be even opening sensible. Um, although nobody knows you're opening until, like, you made it so far into the game, but... Okay, this is the data form for what? Oh, simul. Um... So there are two data forms in there. One's for a tournament, one for a simul. That's okay. Status. Uh, get diff. Oh, right. Um, okay. So now what? Um, I guess make sure it still compiles and such. If that compiles, then I can commit my work in progress change. And probably not get back to it in a very long time, because all the UI stuff is too complicated. So, let's see how far that gets compiling. Um, but yeah, that <laughs> it'll bring closure to what I was doing. Um, at least in getting all the server-side code written. And somebody better with the UI stuff could fix all the UI code. Um, uh, But I think there's also somewhere in the app. Uh, okay, we're in leaderboards. Wait, is that defined in multiple places? Dark chess. Dark chess variant. I thought I saw this named in two files, which would be redundantly redundant. Um, no, okay, I think I got it there. Um, so yeah, now I need to um, need to make sure that I'm not including this somehow in places where we don't need it. 
AI variant choices should not include dark chess. Um, okay. Okay, so that's good fun. Next file, there is no next file. Alright, um, get add this, get status. Alright, did this compile? Let's refresh, build it again. That should build pretty speedily, right? And then we'll find that uh, we can't play dark chess versus the AI. However, against human pe uh, opponents, um, we'd be able to play what would essentially be a normal chess game plus the ability to make illegal chess moves. So is this done compiling yet? Also, what was my Nightbot command? That wasn't it, no. Um, oh, it's just test. All right, play with the machine. Dark chess is not an option. Profile. We see that, in fact, we did play a dark chess game, but there's no analysis button because we can't analyze the game. Create a game. Oh, dark chess. This is a weird way of labeling it. Um, let's improve that label. Grep. Um, somewhere in there. Somewhere in here we have the name. I think this is the name. Um, I think this is what we need to change to no longer be a one word thing. Okay. And then get add that. Refresh. Oh, right, right, right. Um, that's part of... Well, let's go into that module. Chess source main status, get add dark chess, add scale up status, get log, alright, and soon enough we should be able to see the name dark chess as a selectable variant. Um, but I think I want to amend this previous commit and just force push my change. Nobody's using my repository other than me, so having two separate commits that achieve the same thing is a bit silly. Um, okay, create a game. Dark Chess. Um, capital C, right? This is so strange. Yeah, I guess we'll go capital C. Get status. Then this. We're going to change this to... Uh, and then add it again. Hit commit amend. Hit push. Oh wait, get remote list, uh, get push uh, dark chess, and yeah, dark chess has been pushed, um, get log, okay, actually, since we're in a pushing mode, um,
Um, yeah, this is more correct. Push that. There we go. And then over here, get status. Um, all right. Get branch. Oh, we are on the correct branch. It commit all my changes. Get push. Um, no, get remote. Get push origin dark underscore chess. So that's a lot of changes. But yeah. Um, oh, this has got to compile the fact that I changed the name of the variant. Not a big deal. But yeah. Dark chess is just basically if a move looks legal, it's legal. <laughs> um, as far as uh, if a piece can move to a square, it's legal for it to move to that square. Um, I think putting the AI back in place might help me test this better. Or at least um, making this an analyzable variant. It doesn't mean that the AI has to be capable of playing the variant, but... Oh, Dark Chess is in this list. That's convenient. Nice. So yeah, I can like make some funny looking moves. Um, and then I can castle, right? Yeah. So that's as it should be. You can castle if you want to. Um, you can opposant if you want to. You can't opposant this way, but you can opposant a move pawn that just moved through capture. I think this is good. This looks like a good implementation. Um, fun thing to do would be move the kings forward and take the other king. Oh wow! It actually labels that. Nice. Wow. Okay. Um. Fastest checkmate would be what? How to get my... I guess get my queen up here. There we go. That works. Um, yeah. I got the rules right. It's just children's chess, basically, but you can't see. Um, okay. Well, that's nice. Very nice. Uh, get checkout master... CD modules chess, get checkout master, uh, get branch, okay. And yeah, now we'll revert back to uh, the old version of the site that doesn't have all the... Because I don't have the UI changes in place, there's not much point in pursuing that further. I got the rules in place, the rules are right, but getting it to render is another matter entirely. So. Um, if people are very intimately familiar with how the Lee Chess um, front end works, by all means have at it. I've pushed the changes to the appropriate libraries, being um, Leela for Lee Chess, L I L A, and the other library being Chess, no, I'm sorry, Scala Chess, uh, S C A L A, and then Chess. Uh, those two repositories have now both have um, branches called dark underscore chess. Um, so what remains to be done is changing the third library, chess ground, if any changes there are necessary. Like I was saying, it'd be nice if there were some way to style the pieces. If there isn't, then then the remaining changes will all have to be made in Leela uh, slash UI. Um, and somehow be able to add and remove the pieces as they become visible or invisible, which is the ideal way to do it. It's just a total pain in the rear end, and I'd rather do it by styling. And I feel that styling pieces is something that we should be doing anyway. So, anyhow, that's, I think, 
said what needs to be said there. So yeah, um, for those curious, the reference implementation is at dark-chess.com, not my site. Um, it's all supported by donations, so feel free to check it out and support the developer. Um, so yeah, thanks for stopping by. Uh, sorry for listening to me rant, and maybe next time I'll pick a better project. I don't know. It was interesting seeing how um, all the build tools, or some of the build tools for building the UI changed. Now that's less dependent upon NPM, and now it's more using Yarn to a greater extent to do the build, and it's parallelized and better, more efficient somehow in that regard. Um, but yeah, there's just so many layers to this onion that it's difficult to make good progress. But yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time.